Coming up on 9 News Mornings, a Denver police officer is expected to be okay after the officer was hurt in a shootout with a suspect. We'll talk about what we know led up to the shooting. Democratic Secretary of State Jenna Griswold is running for re-election. This morning, we take one of her political ads and put it to the test, true or false. And it's time for our 9 News Cool School of the Month. In this cool school, students get to experience what college is like without the big cost that comes with it. 9 News Mornings starts right now. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. The whole gang is here this morning in the forest. I with, love with it. the leaves isn't changing. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, isn't it beautiful? It just showed up, but it's I really so like festive. it. It's <laughs> festive. Yeah. I was going to ask if y'all know this before. It's new to me. It's okay. new. Yes, and we're loving it. Yes. We're from Guanella Pass this morning. There's a little bit <laughs> outside. There you go. We are live. All right, it is going to feel a little bit like fall this weekend. It really is. After temperatures in the 80s, we've had four solid days in the 80s here getting to October, and now yep. it's going to be cooler and unsettled. Yay! That's kind of a Maybe. Kind of blank. <laughs> Kind of a blanket <laughs> term of cooler and unsettled weather. What does that mean? Well, no 80s anymore. We're seeing the last of those for a while. 70s and even some 60s are showing up. But first, let's take a look at Hurricane Ian. It is back to Category 1 strength, came out over the water, and the water is the fuel for these engines. That is Ian. And so it became a hurricane again. 85 mile an hour winds moving north northeast at 9. We think it's going to be in Roanoke, Virginia, probably by about 2 o'clock tomorrow. Lots of moisture, gusty winds along with this. A big tropical system. 57 degrees is what we're seeing in our area right now. We have some showers and thunderstorms already moving into the state. We'll see in this afternoon with showers and thunderstorms, and then tomorrow they'll be back with showers and thunderstorms, even some snow in the foothills. So increasing clouds today, 79 degrees the high. Then for tomorrow, 72 degrees. Sunday, 74. And then not only the 70s, but the 60s as we get on into next week. Ed, thank you so much. Right now, look at Highway 36 near Broadway this morning, where we are very, very quiet as far as the rest of the metro goes. We're really seeing a quiet metro area map as well. We'll take a look at a couple of your travel times at this hour. 76 West commute into Commerce City right now will only take you 10 minutes. Really, all of our interstates in the green. I-25 drive between downtown and the Denver Tech Center right now, just 14 minutes. And if you're getting ready to travel on I-70. In the next few, no issues to report between I-25 and 225. You're looking at an eight minute commute or faster. Erica, thank you. A Denver police officer is expected to be okay after being shot in the neck during a shootout with a suspect in homicide. It all ended last night with a crash in Broomfield at the intersection of Sheridan and Midway. Nine News reporter John Glasgow joins us live from there now. So John, walk us through what happened here. Yeah, just a crazy situation here. Denver police say that they were tracking a person of interest in connection with a homicide out of Denver. That search led them to this intersection here at Midway and Sheridan, and that's where the shots were fired. Denver police say that the suspect was driving on his white Ford Edge. He turned through this intersection and hit a blue Ford Explorer. The suspect then jumped out of the car and then tried to carjack a gray Toyota Corolla. Broomfield police tell us that the suspect fired at Denver police first, then Denver police returned fire, killing the suspect. In exchange of the gunfire, a Denver police officer was hit in the neck and taken to the hospital. He is expected to survive. He's a 20 year vet um, and a member of the fugitive team, obviously. Um, I, I have talked to him and his wife. Uh, uh, you know, I think you can imagine uh, what he's feeling right now. Uh, certainly grateful. Uh, that, uh, that he's gotten such tremendous amount of support uh, uh, from the community and from, from law enforcement. Yeah, he was very lucky, and there were two children in the back of the Ford Explorer that the suspect hit. Broomfield police tell us they were shaken up, but no one else was injured. Uh, there was also a second person in the suspect car. Now, that person has been taken into custody, not facing charges at this time. However, they are talking with police. Denver police have not identified the suspect at this time, and they also haven't given any details as to what homicide that that suspect could possibly be in connection to. So a lot of questions still here, but uh, we're trying to figure those out. But a scary situation for that Denver police officer. Good news, though, he is going to be OK. Yeah, that is good news because that is just a crazy situation. And like you said, still a lot of questions with what led up to this as well. John, thank you. Right now, a woman in Weld County is facing charges after her 12 year old daughter died from fentanyl. An arrest affidavit says Mystique Juanetta used uh, was using and dealing drugs and her young kids 
started using them too. Prosecutors say Wadena did not have custody of the girl and the two other children, but they came to a hotel room to see her. It was a Comfort Suites in Firestone. It was going to be a visit back in May. Investigators say during that visit, two of the children smoked some of their mother's fentanyl pills. The affidavit says Wadena then called 911 and told dispatchers her 12-year-old daughter was not breathing. The little girl died at the hospital five days later. One child told police they had been smoking since January and that she and her sister had smoked twice on the day that the 12 year old died. Police in Lakewood are looking for a driver who hit and killed someone last night. Lakewood police say the driver in a car hit a pedestrian. This car hit a pedestrian at Colfax and Kendall around 7 last night and then took off. The pedestrian died. Police say the suspect was driving a 1996 Infiniti G20 with license plate number NRO014. They say the car has a sunroof and black wheels. Anyone with information about this hit and run is asked to call Lakewood police. There was also a hit and run in Wheat Ridge. Police are still looking for the driver in this case as well. They say a man using a walker tripped and fell onto Kipling near 41st. A driver in a blue or teal sedan hit him and then took off. The last update we have of the man is that he is in critical condition. Now to Hurricane Ian, and while Florida tries to recover from the devastation caused by that hurricane, the storm is now making its way toward the South Carolina coast. It is currently packing maximum sustained winds of 85 miles an hour, making it a Category 1 hurricane. Ian is about 260 miles from Charleston, South Carolina. It's expected to make landfall there around noon today. A hurricane warning has been issued for much of the coastal Carolinas. Meanwhile, crews in Florida are beginning to assess the damage from the storm. The leaders say that at least 12 people are reported dead, and they expect that number to rise in the coming days. More than 2 million people in Florida are waking up without power this morning. Look at that devastation. Wow. First responders step in to help once the storm passes. When they come home, many deal with trauma from what they've seen there. Dr. Ian Stanley treats them. Most individuals exposed to traumatic events don't go on to develop. PTSD as we know it. However, that doesn't mean that the response, if even if it's not a PTSD response, the response isn't a valid emotional response, depression, anxiety, increases in substance use. Now, while Dr. Stanley says a lot of responders are resilient in the face of stress, it doesn't mean they're fine after they come home. Longer lasting negative health, uh, mental health effects can come out of longer duration stints and the closer proximity to the worst of the devastation. He says many responders work through it on their own. Others do need to talk to friends, family or a professional. He says for those of us watching from home, spending a lot of time immersed in storm coverage can lead to anxiety and depression.